put a video here, life purpose. What's your life purpose? It's been lean and ripped. Be a hot dude or a hot chick. Make heaps of bank, be sponsored athlete. What's your life purpose, Duranida? My life purpose is helping people get healthy and fit and helping the animals and the planet at the same time. And uh, that's what's kept me on track. Of all the, the highs and the lows and the peaks and the valleys and the dramas and the awesomenesses and the not so awesomenesses, your life purpose is what is like your keel. It's like your, it's not even your steering wheel, it's your keel. The keel thing under the boat is your rudder, keeps you on track and you're steering it up here. This is, you know, what's going on here. This is controlling your your destiny, your fate. And uh, so many people don't even know what their life purpose is. How do you find your life purpose? Many, many ways. I, re I would recommend a very traditional, very old school, very simple way is go into Mother Nature. Go into Mother Nature with the, obviously, no phone. I mean, you can bring a phone for safety purposes if you want. I did it with no phone back in the days before we had smartphones. Back in the old days. And I went out into the bush, in the Australian bush, and uh, just had a bit of fruit, a bit of water, and uh, just the yeah, evening I was, I was uh, in the bush, just even just stashed all my clothes, stashed everything, had, had nothing, I had no pencil, no paper, nothing. I was just like another animal in the jungle. It sounds a little bit crazy, but I remember being in Mossman Gorge in 2005, camping naked on this boulder in this stream under the full moon. It was December 2005. I just cycled from the Gold Coast to, to Cairns. It's about 2,000 Ks. I did it on $70. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was an epic, epic, epic trip. Did all and all food as well. It was crazy, crazy. And then I was just, I was just, you know, ping. And having this life clarity moment. It's just really fit. And uh, just a lot of freedom. But also a lot of like, well, what am I doing with my life? You know, what am I doing with my life? It's great to have all this free time, but how am I helping the planet? You know, and some of them just go, well, let's, let's get rid of all the distractions. Get rid of your bike, get rid of your internet, get rid of everything, you know. I was over in the jungle, obviously, about then. And so, yeah, I just remember camping out there just and just thinking, you know, like, this is, uh, you know. And I was thinking, I said, what, what, is, what is vegan to you, Harley? Is vegan just some little eating thing? Is it some little club? Is it some little, like, you know, thing where you get some social media significance and uh, qualifications and stuff like that, you know, get, get sort of ratified by your peers on social media? What does vegan even mean? And uh, I was like, okay, let's go out to the nature. And there's little lizards, and I saw a couple of little mouses, and there's some bats flying in the sky. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to eat these. And I was you know, fidget, fidgeting around for little berries and little roots and leaves, and I was just a nibble on that. I was like, eh, not as good as a good mango. But it was, just, yeah, it was just great to go back to bare basics nature, you know, and just swim in that stream. And wow, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. And uh, don't know how to get, I don't know how to get eaten by mosquitoes. I totally wasn't prepared. I had no repellent or nothing. I had nothing, literally nothing. Bike, everything stashed, you know, half a half a kilometre away in the in this little section, and uh, it's, it's just me barefoot. It was really really radical, and it was really really insightful. And I I emerged from that forest a new person, a new person, with extra conviction. And then I did a uh, after that as well. I did some water fasting in nature, you know, just for a couple of days, and it was just so tough. It was so tough going without food. My body's like, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? You know, what are you doing to us? You're starving us, you idiot. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is stupid. But you know, it lasted a couple of days. It was so weak, blood pressure dropping. Lucky it didn't fall over, crack my head open. And I'm like, all right, my life purpose is to get out there and use the internet and inspire as many mofos to get on this you know, lifestyle, cycling, vegan, you know, healthy, just fruit, the good stuff. You know, get them, get them going, simple living. And I'm just going to stay with my friends at the time, Adrian and Judith, still friends with them today. It was a fantastic family, Adrian and Judith up in Mariba. And it was uh, at Emerald, Emerald Falls. And they were like a, a raw food and vegan, veggie, hippie family, really you know, great times. And it was 2007. And yeah, I remember just, they, they let me stay there and I would just help out them a little bit. And they were just, you know, really, really super generous family, Adrian and Judith and their amazing kids. And I learned a lot from them. It was only, I only stayed for a few months, but it was just, you know, there's that old school, you know, Aussie sort of vibe. Adrian Judith, you know, very accommodating and uh, took me took me in and um, just, it was just fantastic. I remember having these jabotacaba fruits. They were just unreal. It's like jabotacaba. Like it was, <laughs> I mean, I can still taste them today. It was 13 years ago. Wow, that goes fast. And I remember just, you know, just thinking, I just want to get, get the message out there. 
there's so much fruit phobia back then in the raw food movement. There still is today. And, and now it's the, the sugar phobia, it's the rice phobia, it's the sugar phobia, it's the fruit phobia, it's this carb phobia in general. And even the other people who, who you know, promote carbohydrates, like Dr. McDougal, etc. And like, oh, not too much fruit, not too much sugar, not too much white rice. And I'm like, oh man, these people are so confused. You know, they get it right. So it's on here, and then they drop the ball over here. I was like, oh man. So I just felt it had to be the person out there who was doing their best not to contradict themselves and give people the best foot forward on the lifestyle, you know, on the lifestyle that works, high carb, low fat, vegan. Fruit, rice, and sugar. And so I remember staying with Adrian and Judith and they're making me all this amazing raw food and, and vegan food and uh, it was just great times. Just these massive pythons, these Amistine pythons and they were eating the bandicoots that those pythons were and just huge, huge snakes and the bats and stuff and the birds. There's so many amazing birds. I, I actually slept on a trampoline in their backyard. It wasn't even a backyard, it was like a property. There was no fence, it was just like bush and horses there and... It was amazing, and in the age of that was like mango orchards and these lines of jabotacabas. And it was just, man, every day wake up to bird song, have binoculars, have a bird book, trying to tick off which honey it was that was, and it was just, it was mind-blowing. Sleep on the trampoline at night, the stars, for months. It was just, the air quality was just like, probably, it was just nuts. It was fantastic. It was just very soul-cleansing. But then I started, you know, just manifesting, you know, like when I help people, and I'd Help out with with uh, anyone who anyone who wanted, wanted questions answered just for free on forums and stuff like that, and then uh, then later on got with uh, and then that year went down down south with uh, Freely and uh, my mate Grant Campbell, who was the athlete, Doug Graham Floyd, and helping out with Doug organising talks and stuff and all for free and stuff, volunteering and just getting the word out there, and then uh, I mean. Freely got together and, and that started off. And I was like, I kept getting banned from forums just for being so honest. And Freely's like, well, you want you to start your own forum? I wouldn't have a clue how to do that. I'm hopeless with the tech. And she's like, well, let's start one up. And she started up. And then I said, you start it up, I'll make it the biggest vegan forum ever. And I did that. It was for 30 minutes a day.com. And uh, it was the biggest forum ever on vegan. Nothing ever rivaled it. It was insane. And then, you know, <laughs> all that shit went down with with the Freely and she blocked me from the forum so I got blocked from the only forum I created the biggest uh, forum online for vegans ever and uh, and, then, and then got blocked from it so it was just, it was just a, you know, a reminder of like that's when you know you're on purpose as well is when, when you know, things happen hardship hurdles whatever and, you, and it's easy to have like personal anguish or vendettas against people or have a distaste or whatever but then it's just like well is that my purpose in life? You know, and that's, that's you know, everyone gets that. You know, someone does something to you, and you're like, man, what are you doing, man? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't have hate for anyone, but I have a lot of frustration. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, that's just so dumb what you're doing now. You know, like it's affecting your career. It's affecting my career. Like, it's affecting the message. Like, it's affecting your health. It's like, what are you doing? It's just dumb. It's just so dumb. And so I've made my career my life passion. You know, I think that's what everybody needs to do. I think it's the, most of the world's issues today is because people are in the wrong career. Everybody needs money. We don't need much money, but everybody needs money to eat and to have a place to stay, etc. Especially for food. And so people are in the wrong career. Right? You have to get paid to do what you love. You know, and love to do what you do and get paid for that. Right? Let me say it again. When all your work is play, you never work another day. Like, if I make two cents in this video, or two grand, or 20, or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just would love contributing to help people with their health and fitness and weight loss and with the real bias of helping the planet. Because it doesn't matter if you're lean as me and as fast as me and got all these money and fucking hot chicks and hot guys or whatever. It doesn't mean anything, really, if you don't have air quality to breathe. Right. So aligning your life purpose on something that helps the planet is very freaking important. Because people are like, my, my kids are my life purpose. And I'm like, okay, that's great, that's cool, but what sort of air quality are your kids going to have in 10 years' time? What sort of food quality can they eat? Will there be anything left that's not GMO in a few years' time? With cross pollination, etc. You know, like, there's so much experimentation going on. Like, it's great that your, life, your kids are your life, and that's, that's how it should be, sort of thing. But what about the planet as well? Yeah. What, what are your kids going into? What are their kids going into? That's really important, isn't it? And so 
often we get, we get caught up us humans we start clashing with each other start fighting with each other so like, why are we fighting with each other man like you know especially over stuff that doesn't really matter like the air's the air, air quality though food quality you know it's crazy it's crazy and that's I guess that's people say hang on you you're a, you're always calling people out and it's like yeah I like to help people get on the right path in life I get mad frustrated mad frustrated when people come over to this lifestyle and they're like, okay, cool, I'm going to go vegan. Yeah, it's good for the planet. Let's watch Game Changers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, oh, but sugar's bad, isn't it? Can't do sugar. Oh, white rice is bad. Oh, not too many carbs. Oh, eat plants. Eat mostly plants. Eat less. Move more. Oh, okay. All this stuff. And it's like, man, this is going to make Levy mad, fatigued, under carbs, super hungry, super weak. And you're going to be like, oh, vegan, that makes sense. But man, I feel like shit. I can't do this. You know, carbs are so powerful and so important. And so whenever anyone, even friends of mine, you know, people that I, I, I rate, even if they're like carb phobic in a podcast or a post, I'm like, well, do, 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 do that. What are you doing? What are you doing? There's nothing wrong with sugar. There's nothing wrong with rice. There's nothing wrong with fruit. There's nothing wrong with corn. They're carbs. They're plants. They're essential for human health and performance and vitality and energy. People run on coffee and pill, and nothing in my system right now. This is carbohydrates. This is sleep, water, sugar. Right? Notice there's no jump cuts in this video. I don't need to think what I'm going to say. It's just <laughs> prattles on. And so this is what happens is we have this carb phobia. So my life purpose, man, is uh, to help people get fit and super healthy, super fit, super lean, in control, feeling good, and doing that with a... You know, a vegan lifestyle, the right vegan lifestyle, high carb on the bikes, getting, you know, using less machines and more body. Ride, drive less, ride more. We all need to ride more, drive less for the planet and for safety as well. What if you, what if you're going to kill someone's kid because you're driving your car when you could have ridden a bike? We run over someone's cat or dog or parrot. Happens every day. It's crazy. So that's what I recommend. Go out into nature. Right, you don't have to do it extreme. You don't have to go out naked in the jungle and end up in a mental asylum or something like that. People imagine that. You're out there in the jungle and they find you and you're naked. And they're like, what are you doing, mate? Oh, I watched this guy on YouTube. It's Aussie guy called Duran Rider. Duran Rider, you don't watch his videos, mate. He's crazy. And I said, go out in the bush naked and find my life purpose. They're going to think, mate, you're right. Okay, mate, we'll find your life purpose in the padded cell there. So go out there and uh, take a phone for safety because what if you slip and hit your head and or, you know, a boulder lands on your arm or whatever? So you take your phone, but don't use your phone. Don't be on social media, scrolling on TikTok and go, oh, wow, how many how many views has Harley got? Natasha got on TikTok with the old man mask. Don't be doing that. Go out there with your phone for safety only. Bring your food and water. and Because uh, when you bring food and water as well, it helps you like stay carved up. You can think more rational, think faster. Always bring water, always bring food as well. Because you never know if something might happen. You're out of food, then your blood sugar is low and you're like, you can't save yourself or someone else. Always be carved up. And, uh, and just go, what would I do? Let's say, okay, let's say you've got kids and you can't go out bush. What you can do is put yourself in a dark room. Right? Put some sticky tape over the kid's mouth and tie them down so they can't wiggle and move. Or you know, do something where you can stay in a dark room or the dark, create a dark room with a mindfold mask over your face. You're covering your eyes up and you're like, what would I do every day for free? What gets me up at 3 a.m.? And it'll keep me up for 24 hours with no drugs. That's your life purpose. You know? I could be I could be doing uh, live talks, just answering for 24 hours a day. I could do that. That's just like you know, within me. And I love doing it. There's nothing more I love than uh, than helping people, like especially talking on camera, talking one on one. That's my Q and A. I live for the Q and A, live Q and A. It's just like bam, love that. That's why people don't debate me. You ever seen any, any of my critics debate me? Right? There's not a single Duran Rider critic out there, like, you know, like the critic critics, you know, the nutters that would actually go on live stream with me. From, when I say critics, I mean like the people that, the people who are obsessed about me online. They make videos about me, make all sorts of craziness. None of them have the balls or ovaries to debate with me online, live stream. Without behind jump cuts and editing and all this stuff, because they just know, they just know that this is my life purpose, and that's not their life purpose. I mean, some people might go, hey, their life purpose Harley is to hate on you. I look at their websites, I look at their videos, and it's just a three-hour long or a blog post of thirty thousand words or whatever. 
these people, that's their life purpose, Harley, to, to rattle on you. And it feels like it. But some people just don't have a purpose other than, I don't know, trying to get some attention or clout chasing or whatever. And uh, that's that's when you see those people and see them in their eyes, and they're very, they're very sad. They have a lot of hate. They have a lot of anger in their eyes and their face. They hot. You see the face. You see the compare it from a few years ago, or whatever, or the face they put on their books or websites or Facebook or whatever. The smiley face. You create their real face in real life. You see, it's like wow. That's some heavy shit they're holding on their head. And uh, for these people, you know, we 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 can't have hate for them. We have to be be beacons for them because okay? uh, they're damaged. And they want to damage other people. Damaged people want to damage others. And the best thing we can do for damaged people is just to stay away and, and not get involved. And uh, it's hard sometimes, especially when they stalk you or constantly message you or whatever. But uh, it's, all, it's all life lessons, isn't it? All life lessons. So that, that's what I find generally as well. The more on your path, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> oh, the more on your path you are. Let me get some water. Talking thirsty business. The more on the path you are, the stronger the walls will come in. The walls will come in at you. And you'll hit a wall and just bang, just breaking through it. You're just breaking through it, you know? And, uh, you know, so it's a bit like, and you're just moving forward. And people hit a wall and they, they, they might be running at 60k an hour and they hit this wall, boom. And then they just like, oh, no, and they back off. And the wall pushes them back. What are you going to do? Boom, hit that wall. And then you just got to be like, mm. keep pushing. Even if you're doing down to 0.1k an hour, you keep pushing through the wall. Put, keep pushing on. Forward motion is all that matters. And so, yeah, so what happens is when you go, oh, this is my life purpose, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and then you start telling your friends and your family, like, you're crazy, you're a freak, or whatever. Or you go in, online, people are like, oh, you're ugly, you're fat, you're skinny, you're blah, 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 blah. You know? You get all these haters and stuff like that, and, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, and that would be a test. Are you on purpose? You know? Are you living on purpose, or are you just flaky? You know? What's the deal? How, how how solid are you in your conviction? And so, uh, yeah, that's the deal there. So that's why that's what keeps me going. Every morning I wake up, I can just jump online. That's my coffee. That's my caffeine. That's my Ritalin. That's my Adderall. Waking up, getting online, it's like poof, lighting up. You know. Man, it, this, this stuff's powerful. This stuff is like, it's the most powerful stimulant out there. Life, purpose, nothing beats it, nothing rivals it. You know, I've done drugs in my life, all sorts of street drugs to hospital grade pharmaceutical steroids to like you know, the smart drugs like Ritalin and, and all those things, they're nothing. They're weak as piss. They're weak as piss. They're nothing. Nothing compared to heartfelt conviction and purpose. Nothing. That's like that's like 0.01%. You take all the steroids and stimulants in the world, and you come at this high peak, and then you'll be crashing down again once they wear off. If you keep taking them, you just go into a psychotic mess. <laughs> so without purpose, man, nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. And you see these people out there, especially on YouTube, that they take a lot of steroids, they put this like, you know, full-on... You know, steroid natural physique, and it was like, oh my god, you look amazing, and they're making millions and millions of dollars selling the guides to people who don't even know what's going on. The person on the steroids, they're, they're just hard work, and I want to buy their ebook for a hundred dollars. <laughs> can anybody, can anybody sell a coaching program twelve weeks for like eight hundred US? <laughs> so like no one looks like him on his, on their program. But anyway, it's uh, you know, and you'll see these people out there making bank, looking the part, you know. For that, that fake net aesthetic look. But then you can see in their eyes, they're mad depressed. They just, nothing for them is more important than looking in the mirror and being a certain level of aesthetic. Nothing's more important than that. They have no purpose other than this base level of narcissism. And that's why we see some of them commit suicide or have mad drug addictions. So they're just total freak shows in your life. And you see it in their eyes because they've got no purpose. Life purpose. So they just need drugs and everything, distractions to keep them going in life. Otherwise, they're just like, ah. That's why we see such a high suicide rate. I mean, the suicide rate is going, it's going up because people have no purpose. And you see people with money and fame and ascetics, good-looking husbands or wives or happy kids, healthy kids, killing themselves, killing the kids. 
It was crazy. Just recently, last uh, last week, there was a an instance where a man you know, burnt the family alive in a car, and then and then committed suicide afterwards. You know, it's in Brisbane, Australia, on a suburban street. The wife was dropping the kids off to school, and the husband tracked them down. And this is horrific, you know, horrific. And and you look at the the family photos that the media puts up, and you, it just looks like a happy family. I mean, I could see what's going on. I could see they were both, you know, there's some some steroids and stuff going on like that, and you know, a bit of low carb, CrossFit, you know, stuff going on there. And that just that is and that makes people crazy. Low carb, CrossFit, steroids, <laughs> volatile. You know, get someone who's passionate, then take, they're taking steroids plus low carb. That's what happens, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. And uh, it's crazy. So, yeah, no purpose there, no life purpose there. Just rage and narcissism and addicted to significance, you know, and taking things way, way personally. So, there you go. That's what you got to do. Uh, life purpose, man. It's nothing beats it. And uh, you want to die living your life purpose, you know. And you want to die with no music left in you. Why would you want to die with any music left? You know, give everything in life. Give everything in life. Every day could be your last. You just never know when it's your last. I had a guy try to kill me a few weeks ago. You know, it was, it was horrific. I can't talk much about it because of legal reasons. But it's like, you know, it's a uh, last shot, man. Last shot. Don't fuck around. Don't worry about what your parents think. Do about what the fucking haters think, what your ex-boyfriend thinks, or your current boyfriend or girlfriend, or your mum or your brother, or your fucking PE teacher from year eight. Don't worry what they think, man. Your cat doesn't give a fuck what they think. You shouldn't give a fuck what they think. Your dog does, or your goldfish, or your spiders on the ceiling in the bathroom. Don't give a fuck what they think. So why the fuck should you, all right? If you want to do something, it helps the planet, and go out there and do it. Otherwise, you'll be one of these people out there who's full of hate, full of resentment, full of regret, full of bitterness, addicted to drugs, and narcissism, and craziness. You know, like, that's the solution to all the world's ills, is people living on purpose and putting the planet right up there with it. Mother Nature, you know? The saying, Mother Nature never broke the heart that loved her. And, uh, and that's very, very true. But just don't get caught, caught in a rip. <laughs> sea has no mercy. But yeah, man, it's, it's a crazy world out there. So just, man, you know, this is what I did. I was like, I can't work in any of the old jobs I used to do. I just, I can't have that connection anymore. It's, it doesn't, it's not me. Yeah, it's not me. So I'd rather live dead, broken, homeless on the street than make a million dollars a year doing something I didn't love to do. So literally, I, and I've done that. You know, I've done both of those things in terms of like making more money than I ever knew what was possible to do with, and also living dead broke on the street with no money. You know, which is a different reality if you live in Australia or Thailand or whatever versus Rwanda. So uh, yeah, man, that's the reality. It's like, man, money's money's great. Money buys you food. Money gives you a place to stay. But man, fuck it, I'll, I'll be happy to camp out in the bushes, really, with the spiders and the snakes and the lizards and the birds. Some of the best night's sleep I ever had. I'm not talking after sex, but like, you know, in terms of, you know, like, just, just purity is sleeping outdoors. Has to be. Has to be. Sleeping outdoors in the fresh air. Some of the best night's sleep I've ever had, sleeping outdoors. After a big day on the bike, or a big day in the field, harvesting the fruit, just camping out under the stars. That's, uh, that's an amazing feeling, it's an amazing feeling. But yeah, anyway, bit of a rant there. Man, it's some good times. Life's fucking short, man. Life is so fucking short. Don't waste another day stuck in that job you hate. Working with those dickheads. Those dickheads that work. They're nagging. Nye, 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 nye. <laughs> what? what? It's not worth it, man. You're like, oh, I don't want to quit. I don't want to make it look like they won. When you quit the race, you win the fucking race. When you quit the race, you win the race. All this race and status and shit, poof, it means nothing, man. Look at people who are winning in the race. Look at, have you ever seen someone drive a Bugatti or latest Ferrari? They really look happy and, you know what I mean? 
So like when you quit that race, you win that race. Put your ego right back. Put your heart first and your mind second. The ego, ego is back of the pack. And just lead, go for life with your heart and then your mind just with the common sense. Go with that. Otherwise, man, <clears throat> you're going to fuck up majorly and you're going to regret a lot of shit. And you're going to have resentment towards everyone around you that you followed what they wanted to do. Your, your mum, your mum said, don't, Durham Rider's bad, don't follow Durham Rider, don't watch him. No. And then you're like, okay. And then 10 years later, you're like, oh shit, Durham Rider was right. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? Fuck. <laughs> mum, you suck. You said don't listen to Durham Rider. You know? I could have been doing this. What I love to do. Instead I'm doing what you want me to do. I fucking hate this. I hate this. <laughs> so many people, man, like they they oh man. <laughs> it's crazy. And 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 part of me is a bit of a shit stirrer. I think we all are a bit shit stirrers deep down, and I'd like to be able to share on camera. But uh man, some of the stories I could tell you about people who said Harley your advice is wrong and uh Oh man, that's another video, isn't it? This one's already 26 minutes, you know. This advice is right. And you can disagree with me and waste your life, but you're still going to be wrong. And you're going to be in a place you don't really want to be. And I know that deep down. You know, if you're watching this part of the video, you don't want to be doing shit you hate. But you're like, oh, I've got kids, I've got a mortgage, I've got these collectible items, I've got to look after them. It's like, man, that shit, that shit owns you now. Your kids should never own you. Your possessions should never own you. Your mortgage should never own you. you know, break free from all that. If you have to live on the street or move to another country and pick corn in the fields and sleep under the stars and have a simple life, then do that. But uh, most people won't do that. Most people are so scared of social disapproval or they're living in competition with their ex-girlfriend or their ex-boyfriend. Like, yeah, I'm going to prove them. I'm going to get someone hotter than them or... Bigger than them, or younger than them, or better tits, or better ass, or better face, or better job, or better status than them, or... Better, better, better. That's no way to live, man. That might feel good for the first month or whatever, but it's like, that's gonna, shit's gonna eat you up, man. Shit's gonna eat you up. Then you're gonna hit 25, or 30, or 50, or 60, or 70, and go, oh man, where did my life go? I was living in hate the whole time. I was driven by hate, versus driven by my heart. <laughs> oh man. Hate and the heart. You know, that's very, they're very similar, aren't they? Start with a H, end with a T, almost. Hate and heart. You know, it's a hater, is heart. If you don't listen to your heart, you become a hater. So you've got choices there. A hater of life or a heart. Heartfelt life or a hate-filled life. It's just a choice at the moment. Anyway, go check out some Tony Robbins stuff. He has some great things to, sh to share on this lifestyle. I think Tony Robbins has been a big inspiration for me. I listened to thousands of audios of his stuff back in 2005. Camping out, eating fruit in the jungle, and uh, robbing by across Australia. Listen to Tony Robbins on repeat, repeat, and uh, some really powerful seeds, just basic stuff he learned from other people in his life, Jim Rohn, etc. Just all, all this stuff's common sense. This all this stuff's common sense. It just it just makes sense. Makes sense. The most depressed people I've ever met have often the best. You know, ascetic looks or a lot of money or a lot of fame on social media or, or whatever, you know, millions of dollars living in New York or Paris or whatever, and mad, 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 mad depressed. You know, so many things to be grateful for, but they had no gratitude because they didn't believe in life purpose either. All right, so when life purpose comes along, which can happen today, you can find out what you can find out what your life purpose is right now in five minutes. One minute, what would you do every day of your life for free that would you keep you up to 12 hours a day effortlessly? For me, that's helping people with their health and fitness, effortlessly. You know, whether I get paid or not, effortlessly I can do that. And so I hope that you find what your life purpose is. It's not what your parents want. It's not what you in the past wants. It's what you want. All right? And why do you want it? For me, it's contribution. Contribution, it just it feels so good to contribute. Significance is like, significance is is. We all love significance, you know, praise. Oh my God, you're crazy. Like, you're, you're amazing. 1,000 likes, 2,000 likes, a million views, 10 million views, 220 million views, whatever. That all feels good, but you just forget about it after a while. But contribution, man, that's, that lasts. That's the legacy you leave behind. Significance is like, phew, it's fleeting, you know. The contribution, that's the legacy. That's really powerful. That's really important. And uh, that's really important. If you can contribute in ways anyone can. It could be picking up plastic on the beach. 
could be just helping someone get over carb phobia. Could be helping someone teach them how to fix a flat tire or how to use their brakes properly or how to pay attention in traffic or whatever. You know, contribution there. Get on it.